Church and those of you that are joining us online, it's good to be together again. Uh, we're going to start this morning off with some announcements and also some praises and prayer requests. Uh, so first, uh, just uh, some announcements. We do have Tabitha's Closet coming up, and that'll be on Saturday, uh, typically from 9 to 1. So if you'd like to come and serve, there's lots of things that you can do. So if you're interested, please let Pastor Mike know or Becky Reinhardt. Um, also, for um, we do have a Guatemala mission team. They are there now. So uh, the Edmonds family um, is there. There's some pictures on Facebook. They will continue to be there this week. So please um, continue to pray for our Guatemala mission team. Uh, we also have Hannah, who is uh, one of our students, and she is serving this summer at a camp in Virginia. So please pray for her as she gets uh, settled in and as she starts getting campers. Um, she's like one of us, and she's one of our missionaries. So uh, just keep her in our prayers. Um, any other prayer requests that you'd like to be mentioned? Or lift up? Yes. lady her daughter needs prayer yes brothers Edelstein that was having problems with his kidney I'd like you to lift up this this young man in prayer also for Carol she uh, not feeling well this morning, so we pray for her that she uh, feels better. Any other prayer requests? Praises. I think those of you guys know my sister Holly. She's a missionary in Ethiopia. She is back in the States. Yesterday she came up this way, and I was able to get her on a bike, which <laughs> she has not been on since we were teenagers. Aww. I convinced her to go biking around Landon Lake. She loved it. It was hilarious. That's so cute. Um, I just said, follow me, and I kept waiting to hear if there was some trash behind me, but she was <laughs> fine. So it was just a lot of fun. So very thankful for a time of family. We had a graduation uh, recently in April for mm -hmm. him, and it's just exciting. Our sons just moved into their own first house, so Mike was able to go up yesterday and make sure they know where things are. <laughs> um, so prayers for them. <coughs> so any other prayer requests? All right. Well, welcome this morning again, and um, let me say a prayer for us, and we'll go ahead and worship. God, we thank you so much for your grace. We thank you for your mercy and your love, and we just want to worship you this morning. We are here because of you and for you. Um, we want to lift up, first of all, a praise to you because we know all good things come from you. So we're thankful for our families. Uh, we're thankful thankful for the ways that you've blessed us that we can gather again together. Uh, we also want to lift up these prayer requests for those that are sick, those that need a touch from you. We pray for Carol. We pray for this young lady with her EKG and um, for Suzanne's um, uh, family member. We pray, God, just for healing. Uh, we also pray for our Guatemala team, for the Edmonds family as they're serving this week. We pray for protection for them, for courage. Um, also for Hannah as she receives campers, and God, just use her, God, for your glory. And we just give this time to you, and we thank you for it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Amen. All right, why don't we stand together and sing to an awesome God this morning. Holy, holy, holy.
golden crown around the glass you see. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, whispered and heart and evermore shall be. Thou 
Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to justice, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, now we're going to receive our tithes and our offerings. So, Len, if you would come up. Um, for those of you that are watching online, you can give using our office app, or you can go to our Facebook page. You know, one of the reasons why we come is that so we can give God our praise and our worship. One of the ways that we do that is through giving of our tithes. And so, um, at this time, I'll pray for us, and um, we'll offer this back to God and pray that he'll use it for his glory. So, let's pray. God, we again thank you for your grace. We thank you that we can worship together this morning. We thank you for who you are, for all that you're doing. And now, God, as we take this offering, we want to offer it back to you uh, in an act of worship because we love you and you are worthy of all of our praise and all of our glory. So we pray that you would use this to advance your kingdom, and we pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Morning. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We have been in a series all about what it means to be disciples who make disciples. And this is the work that God has given us to do until he returns. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, it says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So these words are what Jesus said to his disciples, his friends, as he was leaving. It was his final charge to the church, to, to us. And he said, go, make disciples, baptize, and to, to teach people to obey. And he gave that also with a promise. He said, I will be with you. And so we've been talking about, well, what does that mean to actually be a disciple who makes disciples? And how do we live that out in our daily lives? Being a disciple is about becoming like Jesus. And this is a lifelong journey where we learn to love God and be loved by him, to hear his voice and respond. And he transforms us by his Holy Spirit from the inside out. And as we are going throughout our days, as we encounter people, he wants to use us in the lives of others to actually share about him, to represent him, to be his witnesses, and to help people grow. And it is the purpose of the church. It's the purpose for our lives. And God, he designed us to do this work together in the context of relationships, inside a local body of believers, a spiritual family, the church. So being committed to and devoted to a church, it's really vital for our spiritual growth. And it's where we, we get to learn how to do that together. You know, sometimes we think, well, it's just about me and Jesus, and that's it, and I don't really need to be connected into a body. But that's actually not how God wired us. He wired us to function inside a community and inside a local church. And he's actually given us gifts, spiritual gifts, that we are to use inside to help the body function and to grow. So when we gather, we gather to encourage one another, to pray for each other, to challenge each other, to learn from each other, to celebrate and worship our great God. And then we scatter. We go out to, uh, to where we live and where, you wo where we work and where we play uh, to, to share that message with other people. So this idea of gathering and scattering, we can see that Jesus did the same thing with his disciples. You know, he walked with them and he taught them. And in Mark 6, verse 7, it says, Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two, and he gave them authority over impure spirits. So he sends them out with specific instructions. He says, go and do this. And then we see in Mark 6, the apostles gathered back around Jesus, and they reported to him all they had done and taught. Then because so many people were coming and going, that they didn't even have a chance to eat. And he said, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So we see this gathering and scattering, this idea God wants us to have this, this healthy rhythm in our lives of gathering together as the people of God and going out to where we are and spending time with him and getting rest. Do any of you feel like it's hard to balance all those things? Like it just gets a little crazy to, to have this healthy rhythm with God and, and with the people in our lives. And, you know, some of you, if you've ever been on a mission trip, have any of you done any mission work together? Well, you kind of practice that on a mission trip. Like you, you get together and you pray together and you go out and do some work and then you're, you gather back together in the middle of the day or at the end of the day and you talk and you share and you pray. And, and the next morning you get together around God's word and you talk about the mission and you pray and you go out and you come back. And so there's this healthy rhythm of, of, of living together as a community of faith, you know, but how do we live that out in the context of our lives? And we can do that. We can intentionally do that in our lives. And we 
you know, also in the early church, we've been looking into the book of Acts about, you know, how did the early church actually, how did they gather? What was, what were their priorities? And then they, then how did they go out? And they changed the world at that time. They took the message out to the far corners of the known world. And it says in Acts 2.42 that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, the breaking of bread and to prayer. So they practiced gathering, but then they also scattered. And, you know, they went out and were led by the Spirit. You know, Philip, you think about Philip going to, to the road, and he met the Ethiopian eunuch. And um, there was a great persecution that happened in the book of Acts, and it says they were all scattered. So this idea, again, of gathering and scattering, it's so important that we try to implement that in our lives. But this morning, I want to focus on the gathering part. Like, why do we gather? Like, why do we honestly come to church? You know, sometimes I think we come in, and it's like we have a plate. And we're like, feed me. You know, give me a word for my life. You know, I want the right song. You know, and then if we don't feel like we've been fed, we go out and say, well, I didn't really get anything out of that. You know, so sometimes we, we make it more like we're the consumer. Like we're supposed to come like to a smorgasbord and get things that we need, and then hopefully it'll last us till the next week. But that's biblically, that's not how God designed the church to be. He actually says, when you come to church, you know, bring a song, bring a praise, bring your gifts, bring Bring things that you actually can lift up to God. So we actually like get to bring God gifts together as his children, as his family. But then we also receive from him and from each other. So it's not just about us coming and just sitting and us coming and being spectators. But we actually are active participants in the time when we gather and we all can minister to each other. So it's not just about socializing or about a speaker you know, or about music, like, it really is about gathering around him. Like, he is the focus of our worship. He is the center of the church. And if we lose sight of that, if we're coming for other reasons, we need to check and make sure, like, this, we are coming because we love him. We are coming to worship him. We are coming to gather around him. And that we actually get to give him gifts. Like when we sing, you know, and I know I, I feel like I can hit maybe one note and the rest of them are off key. But it has to touch the heart of God that, that you know, I'm singing to him. I'm, I'm worshiping him. I'm loving him. I'm spending time with him. I'm saying I'm going to come to church because I love you and I want to worship you with, with the family. And it has to touch the heart of God. And I want to touch the heart of God when I come. And I want it to be about him. And then also sometimes when we gather, we have this idea of church, and I'm going to have the first picture up there, um, Sharon, is is this idea where, again, the pastor and the the staff's kind of on top, and then you have committees, and then the congregation is is this way, where, you know, the congregation comes, and the work kind of goes all the way up, and then the pastor and the staff, they go out and do the and the work of evangelism and discipleship and all those church words that you hear, right? But actually, the biblical model, it's flipped the other way, where actually the pastor is supposed to equip teams of the people in the church, and the church actually is supposed to go out, right? So it's actually all of us come together, and we, we learn together, we grow together, then we all go out and do the work of God together. So this local body of believers, this church family, whatever you're, you know, if you're coming here, like, are we, do we really take it seriously? Like, are we committed to, to this fellowship? It's so important. And some of the characteristics of the early church is something that I think we all should strive for. And the first is having this mutual interdependence. Now, Interdependence is the state of being dependent on other people. How many of you do not like to be dependent on other people? Like, it's very hard for you to ask someone to help you. You know, I think we, we're, we're grow, we grow up with the idea that I can do it myself. Like, I will ask for help only if I can try everything else, and if I can't do it, then I will ask for help. But God says in the family of God, we actually all need each other. Like, God has wired you with certain gifts that I actually need, and we all bring things to the table, and when we, when we all bring those things together, 
first of all, God is glorified and people can see a clearer picture of who he is. And I love that picture of the body where, you know, I th- sometimes I think, I wonder what part of the body I am. You know, am I the hand or am I the nose? You know, I, am I the ear? Am I the mouth? You know, well, I can't be a part that I'm not, right? So I need, you know, Lynn, I need you to use your part and I need you to use your part. And we all have different roles to play and none of them are insignificant and they all work together for the glory of God. And so we need to have this mutual interdependence. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 and 27 says, now to each one, to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. So each of us has a part to play. And then Romans 12, 4 and 5 says, for just as each one of us has one body with many parts, And these parts do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So I know in this, in our culture, one of the things that that is a big struggle is loneliness. Like we don't feel like, you know, some of us are separated from our biological families, and we struggle to find community and, like, our people. I've heard so many young people say, I just haven't found my people, right? Well, guess what? In the family of God, we are our people. Like, we get to bring all of our different experiences and personalities and and gifts together, and we get to say, you know what? Let's let's work for the glory of God. Let's learn together. Let's grow together. Um, And we're all at different places, and, and that's how it's supposed to function. We all bring different things to our lives, and we need each other to grow. And I remember when I was in the uh, Czech Republic and we were working with a small church and we were trying to figure out how do you reach out to the community. Um, I had this, we had some little, some of the kids in our church and they were, uh, they get up and play instruments. It was really sweet. But we were talking about, you know, we were having an event on a Friday night and we were going to go out and invite people to this event, just trying to get people to connect. And we were talking about, you know, just just look for people around. You know, just try to find someone in your life and go hand them an invitation and invite them to come Friday night. And so I remember after church, one of the little boys, David, he was about 10 years old, he came up to me and he said, he said, you'll all come with me. And so he took my hand and I, w- I had no idea where he was taking me. He went outside of the church building where we were meeting, which was just an old house. He, we walked down the street and there were these teenagers standing around and they were all smoking and he walked into the middle of them. He pulled me with him and he go, he said to the boys or the guys and girls in the circle, he said, he handed them all an invitation and he goes here. And then he walked off and left me standing. (laughs) And, you know, I, I was like, I'm an English speaker. These are Czech teenagers. And I was like, you know, so, but it was so, I, I was so encouraged by that because he saw, he saw that he wanted to invite them. He wasn't sure exactly what to say, but he brought me to fill that gap for him. Um, and so we all need each other. And, it, and so it's a, we can all do it together wherever, you know, we are. So mutual independence is so important, but also accountability. Have you ever had someone keep you accountable for something? Anybody? It's hard, right, to ask someone to say, keep me accountable, but we really need this for change. So in the church, you know, what do we need accountability for? Well, we need accountability to help us to keep from sinning. Like, we need to take the sin in our life seriously. So the things that we struggle with, we need to let people know, like, hey, like, I have an anger issue and I know it. Like, can you check me on that? Can you ask me how I'm doing with that? You know, or maybe it's just you, you have a, f- a hard time spending time with God. You know, ask someone, can you, can you, you know, text me at least for time with God, you know? So we need accountability for the different areas that we struggle with. But that's, again, that's very hard for us sometimes. And also when we go through difficult times, sometimes we can't see, you know, we need help. Like we need someone to help us through those times. And we need our brothers and sisters around us that can, you know, help carry the load. And I love uh, Galatians 1 and 2. It says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. 
How many of you have seen this maybe with your kids or someone in your life? You see that they need, like, you need to tell them, hey, I, this is wrong. You shouldn't do that. It's very hard to confront people with that, right? But God says that, that together we should do that for one another, but gently, right, and in love and, and, and because we love each other. But it says, but watch yourselves or you also may be tempted, right? So we have this responsibility that I need to be trying to live this out too, but I also need to watch out for my brother and sister. And it says, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, we will fulfill the law of Christ. So again, there's this interdependence that we have. There's this accountability that we really need to change and to grow. So again, in the church, it's about getting past the surface with people. It's letting people know you. It's letting people know what you struggle with. You know, and that's really beyond Sunday. Like, we have to be able to get into small groups and, and be real with each other and, and, and let people know this, it, this is what I'm struggling with. But sometimes we're afraid to do that, right? And it's hard for us to ask for help. But, you know, so I think it's so important that we practice that together in the church. But also, Pastor Mike, last week, he talked about love. And love should be a defining characteristic of the church. In John 13, 34, and 35, it says, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. But it's so important that we remember that the source of that love, it's not our, our love, it's his love, right? It's his love that needs to be, as he pours his love into us, then we get to share that with those around us. It's supernatural love, and it transforms our lives, and then he wants us to share that with the people around us. Romans 5, 5 says, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So sometimes it's just, sometimes for ourselves, we're not receiving God's love ourselves. Like we feel like we have to go earn it. We feel like we don't deserve it for whatever reason. You know, but then so we go and try to, to share this conditional love that we have but we're blocked off ourselves. So first you need to let God love you, like receive his love and grace, let him pour it into you, and then you go share it um, with those in your lives. But without this agape love, which Mike talked about last week, it's impossible to really be a disciple um, and to, to disciple others. And, and there's, there's so many verses in scripture that talk about that without love, you're like a, a gong. Like it's just, it's without love, it's, it's nothing. And God wants us to experience his love and grace, but not so we keep it for ourselves, but so we can share it. And then unity is another thing we can practice um, in the church. And I love Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane before he was crucified. He actually prayed for unity. Uh, in John 17, that whole chapter is just amazing to hear Jesus' prayer. Um, but in seven, ver chapter 17, verse 22 and 23, Jesus is talking to the Father, and he says, I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are in one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. So again, he's talking here about this unity with him, right, us and him, God, God and his Holy Spirit inside of us, but also in the family of God, this unity should be there so that the world will see a clear picture of who he is. You know, God's plan to reach the world is the church, the local church and the global church. And when we're unified and we're on mission with him, we're not hiding, we're not on the defensive, but we're going out together in love as his witnesses, you know, his ambassadors, his light, his salt, hope in our communities. That's his plan for us together. There is no plan B, and we all like plan B and C and D, right, for, for our lives. If this doesn't work, I'll go with this. If this doesn't work, I'll go with this. And God says, my plan to reach the world is through the church, is through us, the family of God, but our loving uh, God together and are being led by the Holy Spirit. So being disciples who make disciples together 
again, is about gathering around him and with each other and then going out to our neighborhoods, our workplaces, wherever he has us, and sharing about him and loving people with his love and, you know, praying for people and asking God, use me in the lives of the people around me. Now, we just finished a leadership study here, and it was, called, it was through a book called The Adept Church, and it really shares about what can happen to us as a church if we're not careful. And I love water, and it uses a water analogy, so I wanted to share a little bit with you about it. But the first it talks about is the swamp church. Now, have any of you been to a swamp? Okay, would any of you want to go to a swamp? Okay, well, when I think of a swamp, I think of bugs, and I'm not a bug person, right? But also a swamp can, is very like a contained, almost like it feels like it's a decaying kind of place. But a church can become like a swamp if it becomes inwardly focused, like if we hoard all our resources and if there's little interest in reaching out beyond ourselves, then the church starts to lose its outward focus and it, it starts to decay. And God didn't design the church that way. He said, you know, you guys come together and you have resources, but it's not so you keep it for yourselves. It's actually so you, you go out on mission and you go out and serve and you take those things and use it for, the glo- for his glory. But also individually, I think sometimes when we come to church, it's all about, you know, we hear the stories and we, we fill up our plates you know, but it's not so we just can keep it with ourselves. Like, we're actually supposed to let God work in and through us, like, to go out with, you know, I'm going to love God, and I'm going to go out and share God's love. I'm going to, you know, receive the peace of God and let God work in my life so I can share that. So it's not supposed to get stuck just inside of you. It's supposed to flow through you. You know, so are we like a swamp? I think we have to check ourselves sometimes. Am I just becoming, is it just about me? Or am I actually trying to share what I'm experiencing in my life with the people around me? The second kind of church it talks about is the reservoir church. So if you think about a reservoir, it's the water, it's stored, and it's, it, there's some connections out to, you know, there may be some little things going out, but in a tra- in a reservoir church really it's about you know we'll give something out if we want to but there's not a whole lot of relationship so it it, you're still kind of storing things but you're a little bit more outward focused so we but we have to find ways to connect people to to jesus so it's not just about giving something like we have to make sure we're connecting them to jesus because that's what the mission of god is about Then the last kind of church is what we all strive to be, is a canal church. And that is actually, it functions, the water flows from one place to another. It's it's a connector. So remember, like, we are supposed to be reaching out. We're supposed to be relational, sharing resources and moving things. But it, it has to be about discipleship, which is us growing, but also about outreach. So we're not keeping everything for ourselves, but we're also striving for people to know Jesus out outside of our doors. And that's the same way with us this morning. God designed us to be, to, for his spirit to flow through us, right? For his time able to go through us. Now, 1 Peter 2, 9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Now, there is not a period at the end of that sentence. It says, this is who you are now. And it says, so that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Right? He says, I've given you a new identity. I've given you my spirit. I've given you a spiritual family. I've given you a mission, right, so that you can go and share, so that you can declare who he is, so that you can Declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. He says, that's your purpose. And then 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay. I love that picture because I I, I love the art kind of uh, picture. We have this treasure that God's given us, his love, his grace, his salvation, his mercy. You know, we have that inside of us, right? But it's to show the world that this all-surpassing power is from God, not from us. So, again, it's, it's not 
supposed to get stuck inside of us. It's supposed to go out to where it really impacts and changes people. So we actually get to reflect and point to our Lord and King. That is our purpose, to introduce people to Jesus, to help people grow. But we can't share what we're not experiencing ourselves, right? So it's so important that, we, that we're spending time with God, that we're experiencing his love and grace in our lives. And then as we are going throughout our days, we say, God, how can I love someone? How can I share with someone? How can I pray with someone? You know, what can I do today to show people who you are? And it's the little things, guys, that makes a huge difference in the lives of others. Sometimes we think, well, I have to go to the other side of the world to do something. No, he says, I placed you where you are for a reason. Like, I want to love through you. I want to bless people through you. I want to serve people through you. I want to call people to you, to me through you, right? He wants to use our lives, and that is an amazing purpose. You know, he wants to use our lives to have this eternal impact. But again, the choice is ours. Like, how will, you, how will you let God use you the rest of the time that you have on earth? Do you want to be used for the glory of God, for this kingdom impact? He wants, he wants to do it. All he's looking for is availability. You know, it doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. You know, it doesn't matter your background, your history. He just says, come to me. And I love, I love the uh, story I've shared a couple times where, you know, my little friend, they were passing the offering plate, and he didn't have any money, but he put the offering plate down, and he stepped in the plate. And he said, I give God me. Now, I think that's, that's amazing, right? Like, will we give our lives to God and say, God, here I am. You know my faults. You know my past. But use me. Do something in and through my life that's for you. And that's what God does. Like, he will, he will take that, and he will do something in and through you that is beyond what you can imagine. But it really starts with that, God, use me, whatever it looks like, right? Every day, he has a plan for you. Every day, he wants to walk with you and talk with you. Um, and it, that is a journey, right? It's, a, it's an amazing gift that God has given us. But again, it's up to us. And so I, I want to challenge you guys this morning just to stay connected in, in the local body. Let's be committed to each other. Let's really pray and be asking God together, like, God, how can we reach people out there? How can we love this community? How can we serve this community? How can we introduce people to you? Use us in our families, use us in our workplaces and in our neighborhoods, and use this church, God, so that all people will know you. Amen? Amen. Well, let's pray. God, we thank you so much again for your grace. We thank you for your love. And we thank you, God, that you have called us to be a part of your family, the family of you. And God, I pray that you give us courage, God, that you would give us um, just your eyes to see, God, that life is very short and that you have work for us to do. And I just pray that we would all bring all that we have together, that we would learn together, that we grow together together that we would practice this mutual interdependence, that we would be accountable to each other, that we would practice loving each other, and God, that we would go out together, that we gather and then we scatter and we gather and we scatter, and, and we would just go, God, to be the people that you've called us to be. God, I pray that you would um, just give us, God, your faith and your hope and your joy and your love so that we can share that with those in our lives. And we just thank you so much for our time together this morning. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, let us go ahead and stand if you can, and we'll say the Lord's Prayer together to close. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, next week is Father's Day, so please invite uh, a father figure or your kids or to come. And also in two weeks, my identical twin, Holly, a go 
Allen, who is a missionary in Ethiopia, she will be here to give a presentation to you. So we'll try to trick you to see if you'll, you can recognize who's who. So please come back, and we'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful week.